So a very odd thing has happened in the Midlands of England while you and I have been driving all of those Porsches. Jaguar, you remember them, sports cars, cool looking sedans that drive well, most of which happen to have an inline six cylinder engine. Uh, they make a total of five vehicles nowadays. Three of which, for the avoidance of doubt, the majority are either sport utility vehicles or crossovers. Now, yes, I agree that's not exactly the best news for car folks like you and I, and probably the reason why we haven't driven many of them together. Uh, well, one of them, the best-selling sport utility vehicle or crossover, depending on how you look at it, that they make has been the recent beneficiary of a heart transplant. And that heart transplant is based on a 48-volt mild hybrid system. Okay, so let's you and I start with the obvious question. Why is a 48 volt mild hybrid system important? Answer, less moving parts. Now you and I have already covered this in many Mercedes, AMG, BMW, Land Rover, and now this is the first Jaguar episode we are discussing it. The concept is very simple. Take away a lot of the moving parts, like an alternator, like a starter motor, like an air conditioning compressor, and you replace it with an integrated starter generator. And the concept is all of those electrical bits run off the one electrical motor, meaning that integrated starter generator motor, and this way you potentially have less moving parts, and the idea is to make the vehicle more reliable over time. The other concept is to have more torque at a lower RPM. So in the Mercedes, it comes in at about 100 RPM. The concept is very similar here. It's executed differently. In the Mercedes, they have the integrated starter generator motor that sits between the engine and the transmission. In the BMW, the Land Rover, and obviously this one, it's set up a bit different. They do have an accessory drive, unlike the Mercedes. So the integrated starter generator motor sits off of that accessory drive. And the business of that integrated starter generator motor is to replace a lot of those moving parts we've thrown out and provide that extra torque from a low RPM. That's the concept. What does it mean in this application? Well, this is a three liter inline six. It produces a good amount of horsepower, 395, and 406 pound-feet of torque. Now, yes, there are two other flavors of an F-Pace on offer. There is this same engine that is detuned, 335 horsepower. Then there is a four-cylinder engine that's 246 horsepower. You and I need to focus on the one that's almost 400 horsepower just because. Now, fuel economy, you would think hybrid in that mild hybrid name, it would translate to fantastic fuel economy. This is not a Prius. And you can kind of read that in the fuel economy, 20, 26, 22 combined. Then there's the performance figures, and that's where the mild hybrid system does help considerably. This is not exactly a small vehicle. It's got the wheelbase of, say, like a BMW 5 Series, but still can go zero to 60, even as an SUV with all-wheel drive, 5.1 seconds, VMAX, 155 miles an hour. Yes, this is technically what the kids in the car industry call a mid-cycle refresh, but believe it or not, you and I have never driven a Jaguar SUV together. This one, 4,471 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 2,028 kilograms. Uh, for the avoidance of doubt, that is about 300 pounds heavier than if it had the four-cylinder in it. Uh, with that, dynamic mode. Okay, okay, it's about 2,500 RPM. That's kind of better than I expected here. It's good. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, I got to slow down a little bit there. <laughs> wow, I'd go so far as to saying this may be a bit more power than this vehicle can handle. Hell of an engine. Wow, does it really work here? It delivers power all the way up to about 5,500 RPM. Jesus, this thing is kind of quick. I did not expect that. Uh, yes, it works incredibly well with the ZF 8-speed. Something we learned about this transmission, it's used in a lot of cars, but specifically Jags and BMWs. I would argue BMW, they go significantly farther in terms of programming their ZF to be used as a manual, meaning manual mode. This is better left in auto mode, and it's really, it matches the personality, the character of this engine incredibly well, and this thing wants to talk to me for some reason. 
This is what I don't like about these kind of UX systems. I'm trying to drive. I don't want to be interrupted when I'm driving. Anyway, uh, back to power delivery here. This is unusually good. Yeah, I expected torque to come in a bit lower. I guess 2,500 out of an inline six, that's pretty good. Maybe something like the Mercedes where they bring it in around 100 RPM. And I'd have to say that's because of the integrated starter generator motor being bigger and being between the engine and transmission. So that's one of the benefits of the placement or the packaging of the AMG system over the Jaguar Land Rover system. Now, before you and I press on to driving dynamics, may I make a request to the folks at Jaguar? Uh, this engine would be perfect for that XF sedan we drove. Something tells me the lower center of gravity would blend better with the way this thing delivers power and how downright quick it is. I, I gotta tell you, this is somewhat surprising. Anyway, driving dynamics. Uh, here, you're not gonna be surprised. This thing, it's a bit of a handful. Now, a bit of a recap there. It's double wishbones in the front, multi-link in the rear. The brakes are relatively good. 370 millimeters in the front and 325 millimeters in the rear. Overall, braking power is good. It's direct. There's good feedback. I'd say it matches the overall power output of the engine. But overall, pitch, squat, dive, and roll, that's where it is a bit surprising. I guess too much power and not enough suspension. That's where we get into a little, it's not float. I'd say it's more lean from side to side. Really good control over pitch and dive. That's something I wouldn't expect in a relatively long SUV. This has got a 113 inch wheelbase, so it's not quite as long as the wheelbase of say like a, an X5. This, I didn't expect it to be this kind of brutish to drive. You know, Jaguars, they kind of have a hairy chest them when they have more power, as we learned in the F-Type that we drove on this same road. And granted, that's to another level. But this, you can push it. You can push it beyond its limits. You could probably hurt yourself, which I'd say in this case is a good thing. This is a downright fun vehicle to drive. I'd say there's more personality to this than say in like an equivalent X5 or a GLE. So I'm going to shoot this not knowing if I'm going to use it, but there was a problem with this car while I had it. Uh, you probably are looking at me and saying, wow, your arms are really stretched far forward. Uh, there is a reason why. Uh, there's an adjustable steering column in this vehicle. It's not electric. That is available from what I understand. It's available as an extra cost option or part of some very expensive package. So this one has the manually adjustable wheel, which I, I am not fussed with. However, to adjust it, there's a knob here. You like unlock and lock the steering column. So I unlocked it, moved the steering column, but it wouldn't lock again. So the only way I could get the steering column locked to drive the vehicle is all the way forward and all the way down. That is why I look odd driving the vehicle. Oh, and you know what? This is a good opportunity for me to ask for help with the algorithm. What does that mean? Well, yes, that means leaving comments, sure, but it means hitting the like button. That makes a huge difference with the algorithm, as well as sharing these episodes with your friends on all your socials, especially on Reddit. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the Office Game with today's contestant, something that has a stunning color combination, as if Kumo himself picked it out. This happens to be on a Jaguar SUV. It's got a lot of names. It's the F-Pace R-Dynamic P400. Uh, translated to something you and I can understand, that is the most powerful version on offer just below the SVR range. Uh, that means the price, well, $65,200. However, I do feel it prudent to point out one can have an F-Pace that doesn't have this fancy engine, a four-cylinder, for about 50,000 US. Then there's that color. They call it Blue Fire Blue. Say that fast three times. It is a stunning, like, medium slate blue metallic. You must see it in the sunlight. It is not expensive, $610. And then the reason why that blue is beautiful, someone did not pair it with a black interior or like a dark gray. Instead, it is Siena tan leather and Santa Maria Madre Dios. It is about the most perfect contrast I could ask for, $760. 
Uh, then there are the 14-way sport seats. We will talk more about them later. They are not cheap. $2,925. Uh, then we get to the black exterior package. That's like the midnight package on the Mercedes AMG. I am not a fan. This color would look stunning with the satin finished chrome, which is an option. So I would not go for the $375. Uh, then there's the 21 inch style 1068 satin dark gray finish wheels and even two thousand dollars then we press on to something that the folks at jaguar charge extra for i personally think it's a crime to charge extra for in a sixty-five thousand dollar car and that would be adaptive cruise control one thousand three hundred twenty five dollars then one of my favorite options a head-up display one thousand and ten dollars then the meridian sound system this is kind of like the bmw Harman Kardon system it's a bit of a bargain because it kicks eight hundred dollars then there's the interactive driver display why is this optional on a sixty five thousand dollar car five hundred fifty dollars uh, then wi-fi optional on a sixty-five thousand dollar car five hundred dollars and then we press on to another trim option which i personally do not agree with gloss black roof rails now i get it one needs roof rails in a vehicle like this however why oh why oh why do they need to be finished in gloss black have we not already discussed the stunning blue fire blue paint job that we paid what six hundred and ten dollars for so why do we need to pay 360 bucks to make the roof rails look less attractive with this color when the satin chrome finish would look far better and not cost the extra $360. Uh, then we press on to the privacy glass, $200. Then the adaptive surface response system. Now, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, this is the terrain management system, kind of like a light version from Land Rover that they apply to the all-wheel drive system and the traction control system here. Again, why is this optional on a $65,000 SUV, especially when they're charging you $150 for it? And with that, we arrive at the only other item we must pay extra for, and that would be the destination and handling from the Midlands of the UK for $1,150, which brings us to the total retail price of Belt-in. $82,245. So normally when you and I play around in the options game with say a Hyundai or a Kia, I usually sandbag you and leave things out because of the way they merchandise their cars. Here I sandbag you for a different reason. I did not want to tell you about a specific option package. There's two option packages on this vehicle. One's like a cold weather climate package, put that one aside. But the other is like a dress up kit. It's similar to the one that we had in the XF and it transforms the interiors of these cars. The build quality, it's, it's not what you'd expect from a Jaguar. All of the materials, the color and trim, the tactile feel is significantly better, especially as that stability control system kind of interrupts the fun here. Uh, it, it's an expensive package. It's like two, two and a half thousand dollars. But I would argue it's a must in this vehicle. And there's a couple of reasons why. Like, look at the headliner. It's got like either the faux suede or the Alcantara headliner, which absolutely makes this a pleasant place to be. Then working in conjunction with that, the seats, which I did share with you in the options game. These are similar to the seats that are optional on lower end AMGs, where they have much more bolstering, significant difference where you feel like you're sitting in the seat, not on the seat. I have to say, at the same time I am driving this, I have that 2022 Porsche Macan. As a matter of fact, we're shooting the in-car on the same day. That's why I'm dressed the same. Uh, the seats in this, I'd go so far as to saying, are better than the $3,000 18-way seats in the Porsche, specifically because of the back support. Built in because I never say this about SUVs or crossovers, I get it. I now completely understand why you and I see a ton of these things since they came out a couple of years ago. And now with this update of a mild hybrid system and a significantly enhanced UX design inside the vehicle makes it, I can only imagine even better because I didn't drive the original one, but really the yardstick for me is something like an X5 or a GLE. And I'd seriously consider this. It's, it's that good. As a matter of fact, I'd go so far as to saying, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, this is probably the best modern day Jaguar you and I have driven over the past like 10 years. That brings us to the wish list. 
And here, I don't have a lot to add because it already has the mild hybrid system. It already has some real knobs and buttons and a better infotainment system. The only thing I could really say here is 82 large, that's a huge amount of money for a vehicle like this. 82 large, I'd probably be in like a GLS or a BMW X7. That's the only problem with this one. And you kind of need the stuff this car has, especially that interior package we talked about and those funky seats. I don't see a way around the 82 large. So my suggestion is perhaps make what we see here more palatable. 70, maybe 72, but 82, that's just a bridge too far. Anyway, that's one man's opinion. And this is where I turn this around to you guys to find in the comments below. Or if you're on social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do want to leave you with a very unique fun fact. So as I said, I shot this car the exact same day, at least the in-car with that Porsche Macan 2022, which you will see in a couple of weeks. And I can't tell you how that car drives, but the buddy of mine who helped me ferry both cars up to the shoot road, he, he likes this one better. And he's a car guy. And he's got a 71 Bronco that he built himself. That's all I'm saying. Until I see you in the next episode, be sure